Hello. How are you? <laughs> I know I'm a little early. Not bad, eh? You know, sometimes, you know, when you're all ready to go, it's better just to go. Otherwise, you're late. Hi, Ida. Good evening. I know it's evening there. Everything look okay? You guys see me and hear me? I'm trying to get the... This camera is starting to, like, drift, and it, I can't see it doing it, but I'll look, and I'm like, wait, I had it lined up right here. I know that some people would be totally triggered if this isn't, like, straight. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm gonna try, trying to do you guys a solid there. So it's a little bright right there, but these are just the pattern pieces and they'll, they'll not be sitting there. I just need them for our first couple steps, so. How are you? What are you guys working on? This coat took us a bit to cut out. Um, and then I went over everything, everything looked good. Um, I can tell this fabric um, is starting to relax, you know, but it's kind of, is it still bright? Gosh, it, you know, my brightness must have changed because it doesn't look bright. I was actually going to ask if you guys want me to bright, brighten it up. Let me see if I can, um, okay, I'm going to do a little bit. And you tell me, how's that? <laughs> so, um, I did have to cut the interfacing on the large center front um, facings, like the inside of the jacket, the ones that are like this wide. So you didn't see me cut those on camera. Um, and I also only needed four of these, not eight. Okay, good, thank you. I only needed four of these little um, welt pieces. And so I think on camera I cut four, but I cut them all with the um, fusible going, you know, one for like four lefts instead of two lefts, two rights. So um, you may need to adjust that if you cut it the way I did. And then let's see, what else did I do? I marked my welt. I don't think I, I don't think I missed anything else. I think that was everything. Like I, I, I looked through the instructions. It looked like I had everything. <laughs> I was a little like by the end of that going, do I have everything? Um, and then I learned about the Pelon that Hearts sent us and it's called, um, I already forgot it. It's called Shape Flex. Shape Flex by Pelon and it's 100% cotton with a fusible side. And Allison says it's all she uses now. It comes in black and white. It's on their website. And she doesn't pre-wash it, but she's thinking about doing a test where she's going to wash it and see how the glue fares. I mean, I've heard people recommend pre-washing interfacing, but they weren't, they weren't necessarily talking about this. They were talking about the other stuff. So, um, so I'll, if she ever does that and lets us know, I'll, I'll pass it along and see, because I feel like I really like the way it fused. It feels like it's one with the fabric. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't feel like you've added another layer. It's the like texture is really nice. I mean, it just seamlessly blends in if you get it fused on there really well. She said she had a spot where it rippled a little bit in the wash, and, but she could iron it out. So I think like overall it's nicer than the like fusible Pellon I added to the fronts because those are already kind of rippling. Hi Jan, how's it going? So, you know, pick your poison. You know, traditional coat making, like menswear, they never used fusibles, you know? So um, there's that to consider. There is some traditional coat making supplies where you don't use fusible at all. And as like, the, I, you know, worked for that fabric store where the woman was kind of a purist about some of the things she used. And she was like, I'm not gluing stuff to my project. Like that's the way she looked at it was adding glue. And she kind of definitely, kind of that seeped into my brain a little bit. And, um, you know, like I, I won't even use like stitch witchery or glues on my hems. Did they flatline? What's that mean? Flatline. That's kind of a serious thing, isn't it? Did they flatline? <laughs> What's that mean, Jan? <laughs> Hi, Nicolene, how's it going? Good evening, good afternoon, good morning. <laughs> 
So in case you're new here, I'm Sarah Me, and this is So So Live. I always forget to introduce myself. Um, I, you know, I don't know why. <laughs> it's like Jeremy with an S is how you say my name. And people spell it usually J S E, but it's S A. I don't really care. So the lining directly to the pattern pieces. Yeah, they did, Jan. You mean like in traditional coat making? Yeah, they you would see like these hand big hand stitches. I'm not an expert in um, tailoring and coat making. I just am aware of it. You know how you can become kind of more aware of certain aspects. It's obviously a really, um, I mean, the garment industry has so many facets, right? So <laughs> it's a whole branch of it that you can specialize in. Terry can probably tell us more if she joins because I think she followed kind of a combination of techniques but she definitely consulted a lot of the traditional ways to construct a men's coat. So, um, so we're making the opium coat. I could start by telling you that. It's a swingy coat, swing style. Like I've been using that phrase, but now I can't, now I can't think of what. Um, and you can do a belted version or a snap version. The hashtag has some really cute pictures of this. It's by Deer and Doe Patterns and Hearts Fabric sent us everything to make it. So I don't get to keep it. <laughs> but, um, I, I, you know, so it's a long coat as well. So it's going to be kind of a big project. And we're doing it in a Brussels washer linen in this really amazing blue um, which looks kind of like a denim blue on the screen for me, but it's a little a little lighter than that. It's really nice. I would call it like, I don't know what I would call this blue. It's nice, it's a really nice blue. Um, and the Brussels washer linen is super easy to care for. Like you can wash and, and wear it. You don't usually have to iron it very much. Like I made the Upton dress out in it and I was going for kind of a casual, I didn't want that dress to look dressy, but it totally looks dressy. I could, Megan. I'm going to send her pattern back because she sent me her own, though. <laughs> and that's fine. I have I have jackets and coats, you know. And if I ever want to make it, I know where to get the pattern. So it has um, welt pockets on the front that are origami style. And we are lining it in a really cute snail print um, that is a polyester lining. So, which will be nice. It'll glide over the clothing. Hi, Alicia. How's it going? I like seeing your all well box top in the pink wrinkly linen. That was cute. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, right, Nicolene? Yeah, yeah. I've been there. We'll just be your your podcast in your ears. The, this is what I've heard, Nicolene, is people who are like, we had you on in the background at our sewing retreat or our little sewing weekend or I have you on in the background. And then they spend half the time like running to the computer to like chat something. <laughs> so be careful. <laughs> We're here for a while. So, okay, let's get going though. So we start right off with the welt pockets. I know you guys are all probably really happy with that. Um, and I read through the instructions the first few pages because I'm going to try and do this the way they say to do it just so that if you're following along, you can kind of use me as a video guide to their instructions the way they're doing it. Sometimes I don't follow instructions, you guys. I mean, like, I don't feel obligated to. Um, I just sew it the best and easiest way that will give me the best results in my opinion, but you might have a better way and the instructions might have a better way. So I try to use the instructions for some of these bigger projects because I know people are like maybe a little more nervous to sew something like this and they just need kind of like that little guide, you know? So, all right, so I'm going to mark my, I didn't mark the welts. I did mark them. So I did interface all these pieces. So I have the roll here um, for the collar, like the front shawl collar or notched collar. Um, and then I interfaced the welt pocket area with that 10 inch by three inch piece. You needed two of them, didn't really say that. And then I did the hem. So this piece has a lot of interfacing. It's why I used it in the um, thumbnail for the video. So kind of fun to see all of it. 
All right, so I have these pockets I'm kind of keeping in a nice little pile. I'm, I'm really liking this pie slice made in the canvas the best right now. Like I didn't put a magnet on this one. Like my other one has a magnet and it just sits here. But um, I really love how crisp the, the canvas. <laughs> Jan. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> There's more than one way to get there. <laughs> I feel like that that's the key, right? Because sometimes you're like following a pattern and you're like, this does not make sense to me. And then you see someone else go, oh yeah, it doesn't make sense to me either. So I did it this way. And you're like, oh, I didn't even think about doing that, you know? So, all right. So I'm just going to line, line it up in a few places. Like you don't really want to just assume you have it lined up perfectly and then not, right? Um, I'm also going to pin it down. I have to do each layer separate. I could have done this when I was on the cutting table, but I know that the chalk would have rubbed off by now. But it is really awkward at my sewing table under a camera. I'm not gonna sugarcoat that, so. All right, so it's folded right here. Here is my welt. Can you see that on the camera? Barely. It looks like there are some notches here. I'm not sure if they line up to it does look like they line up to the pattern pieces right here. So you have a double notch for the pocket and then a single for the deep pocket lining. That's interesting. Deep pocket and pocket. Usually you would call those top and under pocket. Um, that would be the proper terms for those so that it's the pocket. The top pocket's the one that's closest to the outer coat and then the under pocket's the one that's closest to your body. So um, that's typically how you think of it, but I know sometimes that can be confusing language for people, so maybe they come up with their own. Um, I'm really glad I actually just saw that because I actually assumed the deep pocket was the other one, the, the like longer one, but it's the shorter one, so. Good to note, put it in the back of my head. Because if you sew the wrong ones, your pocket's gonna be probably an inch or more to less deep. <laughs> so, all right, so I'm just gonna chalk this line here. I'm going to do it in the form of a T. I, I love these Choco liners. It has this little tiny, like, you probably can't even see it because I have the autofocus off, but there's a little gear right here. Can you hear it? It's so satisfying. Um, and it, they come in lots of different colors. I'm not sponsored by them. I just really love the thing. Um, they used it, it used to be in the shape of like a lipstick case. Um, and I really loved that one. This one took me a little bit to get used to. This was the white one, but I filled it with a yellow cartridge. So now it's a little more wasteful because you just screw this cartridge on and off. See, I'm gonna make a big mess on this coat. See, so you don't have to pour the little, there was like a little like bottle of chalk that you would pour into your like lipstick thing. <laughs> so, but you can get pink and blue, gray, white, yellow. I like white and yellow. It tends to be the one that shows up because yellow will show up on white and um, white will show up on yellow. And those are really the two that you have to worry about, you know, so. Gray, I would never use gray because I use gray thread so that it blends in, you know? And that just seems like maybe the gray would blend in, but I don't know, I've never used it. I don't really know what it looks like. Maybe it's kind of silvery and shows up even better on all colors, who knows? Because we all know how fickle grays can be, you know? All right, so let's do our other one here. And let's hope I don't rub off the one I just put on there. All right, so I'm lining it up. A few different spots. I accidentally cut Allison's pattern there. Sorry. I folded it back to get the interfacing piece. Oh, I know what the other thing was. So I was telling you guys the things I did off camera to make sure everything was like ready for today. And um, I misunderstood the collar So it says in the pattern instructions to interface above the roll line, 
But maybe in um, the actual pattern pieces, the roll line is written like here. I'm not sure. So I interfaced this whole piece here. It was this lower piece you need, not the top. I actually should have known that because that makes sense. You usually have it right there um, and it's the under. It's like, it's like providing a collar stand because this kind of collar doesn't have a stand, but we all know this collar. Like when you fold it back, it kind of stands up against the back of your neck and that's the roll line right there. So, you know, like it's gonna go like this. Like this. So that's the, you know, one half of the collar. That's not too dark. I just said it was too bright. So I, I, I lowered it a little. It looks so dark for me. <laughs> Maybe it's because it's bright in here. All right, let's mark this. <clears throat> I feel like my, um, you know what? I got so mad at my dogs last night because I scared the daylights out of me because I was falling asleep and they started barking. And I was like, no. <laughs> and I like scratched my throat saying it to them. Like it must have been just a weird way I said it. So I actually feel like I have a tickle now. That's what I get. That's what I get. All right, so here's my chalk line. You, you know, I would go for symmetry between your two coat sides, your, your front and your, your two fronts and the angle, like I, I definitely take your time and mark these because you definitely don't want your pockets to look asymmetrical after all the work you're gonna put into it, you know? All right, so let's set this aside. Set my choco liner aside and now I can set these aside right there. And then we're gonna make our welts first. So like I said at the beginning, um, I cut four of these, but I cut four lefts or four rights rather than two and two. Cause I, I don't know why I remember reading that, that it was kind of a confusing thing. Like cut four of the eight pieces of nine. Remember it said something like that. <laughs> so I, that was just a lot of numbers. So I started cutting all eight. So I was like, all right, I need four with the, the like, glue on one side and then I'll need four on the other side, right? And so I was wrong. You need two and two, two lefts, two rights. You don't need to interface all eight. So if you're gonna sew one to each, right sides together, you're gonna do these three sides here. Three eighths of an inch seam allowance. The seam allowance on this is pretty small. I was sewing, what happened? Here we go. Oh, I do the dumbest thing when I, thread my needle, I put my finger in here to kind of hold tension, but then when I go to pull my finger out, it unthreads the needle. I have never, ever been able to break myself of that habit. I just know I do it, and it's just something I have to deal with. You know? Yeah, you remember that, Nicolene? I know, it was kind of like, four of the eight. I understood it the day before I started cutting, but I didn't understand it on the cutting, obviously. Totally forgot. I'm having to kind of walk my foot because the under layer has been interfaced and the top layer is not. It's going to be a little bit like loose, a little looser, you know? And I don't want it to grow. And then you'll trim your corners. And then you'll pop them out. Like this. That's very narrow right there, right? So you need four of these to make the like, like it looks origami, but it's not. Brooke! Hi, hi, hi. How are you? Long time no see, Brookie. You've been busy, man. I really want to um, top stitch these, but I'm not going to. <laughs> well, you know, that's how it goes, you know. Sometimes it's just, oh, you just can't do all the things, you know. 
How's your kitten doing? Bramble. Well, I hope you do the block pattern. Your head is still, wait, what block pattern? I worked on one yesterday and my head is still spinning. She's grown? Aw, I want a picture. I want a picture. The paper piece block? Yeah, like, do you mean the quilt block I've been working on, Jim? You guys are all experts at that, though. I'm the one that's the noob. <laughs> this one grew a little bit. See that? Like, it grew a little bit. I'm going to go by the one on the bottom because, obviously, the interfacing kind of locked it in place. Oh, the block. <coughs> it is definitely on my mind a lot, Jan. Yeah. I know. Oh, okay, cool. Thanks, Brooke. <laughs> you see that picture I posted on my personal Instagram of Loki and Molly? They sleep together now almost all the time. It's so cute. Molly is like a different dog now. And I think, I don't want to give all the credit to Loki, but it is a big part of it. She's just younger, and it took, like, a while for her to, like, she, she accepted him pretty quick, you know, like, it wasn't that she hadn't accepted him, but um, she definitely just was kind of like, yeah, he's here, and I like him, it's fine, you know, uh, but lately, she's been far more interested in, like, instigating play and tug-of-war. It's really cute, and, you know, he always is, like, snuggling up to her and she doesn't mind at all she doesn't like pull away she doesn't like you know push him out of the way get up and move ever she just sometimes he'll like lay down right on her face you know and um just because he's like trying to get as close as possible and her face just happens to be where his whole body's gonna lay down <laughs> and then she'll just lift up her head and set it down either on top of him or on the arm chair or the arm of the chair they both are small enough that they fit together in the chair. Um, and she's lost weight. Like, she's down to, like, a, a, a healthier weight. Because she's gained a few pounds. Um, I have, Nicolene, I have a, a dog that looks a lot like a Shiba Inu. I don't think she's full blood. I never even heard of those dogs until I got one and people asked us. I don't think she's full-blooded, but I definitely think she, ha she has a lot of the characteristics, like some of the more obscure ones, like the spots on the tongue and her skin color changes color in the sun. It she, she looks like an eggplant, you know? Um, and then Brooke rescued some pug puppies last December, and we took one of them. Hi, Rachel. So, uh, and he's like a little over a year old. And then Molly, the like Sheba looking dog, which Shebas look kind of like, like a little fox type dog that's like cattle, cattle dog in, in like profile, <laughs> you know, I don't know how to describe Molly, but if you look at real Sheba Inus, they look, they look, more of them look fluffy and they have like lion head and kind of squinty eyes and they're like, they're really cute. I follow a couple on Instagram, of course. One's, um, they're Japanese, and one of them's in Japan named Marotaro or Maroturo. I can't remember. He's pretty cute. Yeah, and Cricket saw um, Loki's uh, sister recently, Brooke. Busy. And um, she's doing really good. She had a bad tummy ache recently, but now she's, she's bounced back. She is energetic, that dog. Yeah, no, they, they bark, Jan. <laughs> oh, really? It's the original Joge, an internet meme thing? Really? Oh, I didn't know that. I'm such a... I'm so in the dark about that. 
She is definitely still busy. And her name is spelled B-I-Z-Z-Y, like Busy Phillips. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Now, she was Bark Jan. In fact, they can be a little bit, um, they, they're they more, like, real, like, 100% Shebas typically don't like sharing their home with another dog. They're kind of more like, I'm a solo dog. And they can be a little snappy at people that just approach them really quickly. She's a lot more friendlier than that. But she definitely sometimes, she doesn't want to go to the dog park. She goes to the dog park, she sits on the bench with the people. She's not a dog. She does not go in for that butt sniffing thing. She doesn't want anyone getting near her like that, but she's like, hi, yeah, that's me, you know. Hey, Heather, how's it going? So, um, and then the other day for the first time in a really long time, some people walked up behind us. We'd seen them on the trail already. They had done their loop faster than ours because my dogs sniff everything. Um, and then Loki was like, hi, you know, the, he's such a, he's like a pug puppy, like true, just like, I love everybody and everybody loves me. Nobody could not like me, you know, like he goes up to everybody and he was doing that saying hi. And Molly was too. And she was like, hi, you know, wagging her tail. And then all of a sudden she went, woof, right at those people. And they were like, oh, cause they were bent over. And I was like, whoa, Molly. And I think she was feeling protective over Loki a little bit, but then she was kind of like, you know, <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. So, all right, we need to iron these. So, yeah, so, yeah, Loki, or Molly is definitely a, a people's dog. She's like, I'm not a dog. I don't know what you're talking about, <clears throat> you know. So, all right. Um, so, I'm going to press all these. There's, there's Loki's fur right there. Sorry, hearts. You know, when you put things in the laundry and they come out hairier than when they went in, it's not good, you know. But I just washed like all these like little, I put these little fake quilts. They're not fake quilts. Don't get me, I know, don't get me junk about that book. They're not fake quilts, but I put down these little pet quilts all over my furniture so the pets sleep on those rather than my furniture. So these, Brooke, are, um, they are, are, are these welts right here. So it's kind of looks like the welt's been twisted, but it's like, so it's like fake origami, you know? Gives it that origami look. So. No, now I'm making croissant pen cushions. Keep up to date, man. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> All right, let's switch to the iron. <clears throat> yeah, we're making the opium coat, Brooke, um, by Deer and Doe Patterns. I really want to top stitch all these, but you're not supposed to do that. I kind of want to do this, like, I kind of want to press the seam like that and then press it. It's so much better. You know, I feel like I got that technique this year, really working on the French seams, you know? So if I press it, one way like press the seam and then press it down on the edge it's way nicer you know what i mean jelly beans let me turn that so i can see the this is like a brussels washer linen so the blue looks even brighter over here but it's not this bright it's not a royal blue Yeah, I kind of figured you knew, Brooke. Yeah, so it's got this interesting detail. I actually, of course, mistakenly thought that you sewed something and then twisted it, but if you've ever done that before, you'll know that that won't work. <laughs> because, like, say this was a rectangle and we twisted it, that's what would happen. We would have a rodge up here and a rodge down here. So this is how you get that kind of look. Definitely when you sew these, make sure you pay attention to your seam allowance so you're setting yourself up for your welts. Um, be really consistent. I'm gonna press this on the, on the interface side as well so I make sure that I'm getting it onto the, line up all those edges there. And so you need two this way and then two this way and then you need you know the interfacing side goes out on the body.
Okay. So Brooke, didn't you go to the fabric store recently? What did you end up deciding on? Did you get anything to sew any clothes? I'm curious. What you making? I need water. I just put water in this yesterday. I don't know where it all went. Oh, I know where it went. I <laughs> ironed all the interfacing. <laughs> oh, how quickly we forget sometimes, eh? So, uh, Brooke, also, how close is Geyserville to you? I saw that there's a big fire there, and it happened overnight. And I know that's in your neck of the woods. Kinda. More than mine. One of these days, I know I'm gonna miss my chair when I sit down. But hopefully I will not have clicked the camera button before, so you don't see it happen. But you might hear it, and you'll know. When you hear that big old crash, that's me falling on the ground. All right. So let's see here. So I have my interfacing back here. You don't need to draw the line on there. I did that and then I was like, doesn't matter because um, you need to sew it from this side. The difficulty level, that's a good question. Let's see. Do they, do Deer and Doe usually, hi Dorothy, how's it going? Um, do Deer and Doe usually provide a difficulty level, Heather? I don't have the actual pattern pattern. I don't know if it says it on this, Heather, sorry. Um, I would say a solid intermediate because uh, you do have welts, you have the notched collar and you do, it's fully lined, but you know, it's kind of how you push yourself a little bit. Just wondering my thoughts. I've never made it before. You guys, that's not too dark, you're sure. Is it just me? Come on, camera. Brighten up a little bit. That's not too dark? Tell me if that's too dark. It looks too dark on my screen. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna make sure I do this the way they say to do this. So you're going to, you know, lay your pockets in two piles. Hi, Terry. No, the fabric is pretty. Okay, good. Yeah, it's really pretty. It's a little dark. Let me, can I just brighten it up a little bit? Ida might be like, no, it was too dark, too light. I mean, okay. That doesn't even seem like, seem like it did much, but maybe it's just the angle of my monitor. All right, so um, you want your pockets let's see you're gonna want one like this layered with the um, fat side on this end narrow side and this on the top and on this one you're gonna want it the fat side to be on this end so you see how these are both different these two piles and you're going to line them up and then just stitch them together you're just kind of tacking them so that it's not too fiddly to deal with Right? This is pretty thick though, so it's gonna be interesting. Line this all up well. I think it'll be good in the long run. Stack those edges really nice. Um, get all your edges in there. Kind of adjusting how this is folding here so that I make sure I don't get that showing. 
the under the underside creeping out on the top there. Hello, Louise. It is better. Great. Hi, Carol. How's it going? Okay. All right, all right. So, because you need a left and a right, you don't want them to be the same as each other. So I'm just kind of making sure, especially this one, that none of this underside is creeping like towards the front. And I'm lining up all my raw edges and we're just tacking it all together. Okay, so now we have our two welts. Right, welt. <laughs> yeah, you're not too late. A few people just joined. <laughs> I know, Dorothy, it's so tough. Like, people work during the week. I know that. It's, tr it's tricky finding the right time, you know? All right, so first thing you're going to do is you're going to put this right sides together and by that I mean the side of your welt that has the inner facing on the top piece that is the outer welt that's the one you want to show to the world so you're going to put that face down against the coat like this you're going to line it up on this edge and you're going to center it um, between the end points because they're going to extend past the seam allowance you're afraid of welts? <laughs> There's so many different kinds and they're really not as hard. I've never done this one, so wish me luck. Um, and the way you sew this one seems pretty pr pretty non-traditional um, as far as the difficulty part. It, it seems like anytime you have a welt like this that shows on the outside of your pocket, like it sits on the outside of your pocket, it's a really great welt to do. Like even if it's the square kind, a big, big, like big wide, um, you know, rectangular welt. Those are great because they can cover up any of your sewing difficulties underneath. So it's the kind when they have like the two narrow welts that meet each other or are inside of the welt opening. Those are the really hard ones. Yeah. So that's what, um, that's what I've learned. So like the Tamarack jacket, is a really, really popular jacket by Grainline Studio, and it has welt pockets, but they're very good, they're very good starter welt pockets to put on uh, because you have that big, wide um, welt that kind of covers everything up. So you just gotta know what to look for. All right, so I'm gonna start and stop at the end of my, um, so you see my chalk right here? So I'm centering this on the welt opening here. I'm gonna line up this raw edge to the chalk and I'm gonna start and stop my sewing from the chalk end point and start point between there. That's where I'm gonna sew. I'm not gonna go all the way to the edge of the welt, okay? You're gonna stop 3 eighths of an inch away from the edge, which is basically the end of the chalk line. And this is kind of weird to sew. Stop, stay down. What are you doing? <clears throat> I have different shoes on today. And the heel is different than what I'm used to. I usually, I always wear clogs, <laughs> but this is a different company and my heel's hanging off so I can tell my machine's kind of touchy. So your welt in general is a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Maybe this one is three eighths, which would be kind of odd. But the opening is usually a quarter. All right, so I stopped right here and I stopped right there. Okay. Okay, I think actually, yeah, you do. You stick, you stick it there. I usually, you, you, they want you to put your pocket lining down first and then you stitch it. So I just stitched it first and I just need to make sure that I get the right, um, 
see Milan, so. You can't sew with shoes on. <laughs> yeah, Rayanne never did either. She always sewed barefoot. I'm sure if someone ever walked in, like, from my insurance company, they'd be like, uh, no. <laughs> That's so funny. I can't sew without shoes on. I'm used to the height depth, especially because I wear clogs, so. All right, so let's see. So we have um, four pockets. And they go, two go to this line and two go to this line. And we want the, um, I think we want the shorter, the taller ones. That's weird. We want the taller ones, huh? Okay. Is that true? Usually your taller one is on... Wait, did I do this on the right? Oh, I didn't do this. Oh my gosh, you guys. I did this wrong. I'm sorry. This should go under here. I don't know what I was doing. I was looking at this like this. I don't know why, so sorry about that. But you're under, usually your pocket, the tall one goes to this edge and the short one goes to that edge. So just ignore what I just did. Yeah, right, Carol? Exactly. I, I I told you about the roommate I had when I was in science school, and she got so mad at all the pins. Drink! <laughs> Too early. This The seam ripper um, always summons Nancy, so, you know, that's how we get her in here. No, it's uh, called Brussels Washer Linen, Dorothy, um, and it's a, like a linen... Ten, uh, what did I say it was, you guys? Where'd the paper go? I'm bounced. There's a lot of stuff here today. Let me get it right. Where did I put it? Oh, here it is. Right here. Right here. Yeah, it's linen and rayon. And um, you can machine wash it. It doesn't wrinkle barely at all. It's great. All right, just ignore all that bit right there. Get rid of all your threads. All right, get rid of these threads, and it'll be like it never happened. Nobody caught it on video or anything. Yeah, I love this fabric. I made the Upton dress out of this in a red. It's really awesome. Okay. So again, this is the interfaced side up. Um, so I'm gonna put it down, let's see. So that means the triangle will be like that. So maybe I want my other one. Or do I want it like this? I think I want it like that. Don't you think? So. I think in the picture it's this way though, like that. Let's look at the cover. So this is this one. Oh yeah, so it goes like this. <laughs> so it's gonna finish like this. This is the left front. Rewind, I know, right? Wouldn't that be nice? Hi Carrie, how's it going? <laughs> it's not heavy. But I am going to be lining it, which will add a little bit, but it's not a very heavy jacket. And I think that makes sense considering that the fabric store that's sponsoring us, they're in Santa Cruz. So this is actually a really great weight for that area. All right. So supposedly these are the ones I want. I'm kind of still skeptical. Because, see, this is the longer one. And when this gets sewn in there, and then this one gets sewn in up here, this is how you do it. You go like this. Then when it's all lined up, so that's going to be too short. So I have a feeling that my, my pattern piece could be mismarked. 
Because see, there's a double notch right there. That actually feels more like, I think these are the, the unless I'm just reading the directions wrong, but um, this is um, the shorter one. And I feel like that's the one you use on the lower side. Just logic, logically. Okay, so we're gonna line that back up. We're gonna line this back up like that. And again, I'm stopping just shy of the end. Did you see that? Not sewing. That has a trippy snail print. <laughs> it kind of goes hand in hand with trippy, you know, with the like Nautilus. <laughs> what fabric are what what are you talking about, Carol? Oh, you bought fabric for this and it's a um, wool poly. Is that a mistake? No, I don't think so. If you like it, I think that'll work great. Sounds easy to care for, you know. My stitch length looks really long. Okay. And then we have the upper pocket, like this. And see then when it goes like this, it should all line up like that at the bottom right there. Yeah, exactly, Carol. I know, the snails are really cute. I love snail things, you know? I even have a snail pincushion pattern that I bought. I've never sewn. And doing this whole like my cupcake and the pie slice lately, I'm like, I might sew that. <laughs> I do not need another pincushion right now. I have like probably at least 10 right now that I've just made recently. All right, so um, I didn't really explain much, but this is the Shorter pocket lining piece, face down. This is the right side, face down against the pocket. That means that um, when you're wearing the jacket, the right side of the pocket is be is facing your hands. And so the reason I did that is because this is a fully lined jacket, and you're not going to see your pocket lining um, when you open the coat up, like in the tamarack, you know. So. Um, you can choose what you want there. Maybe you don't have a print. Um, I'm pretty sure you don't go across the ends here. You don't, you don't, you don't. You want these stitches to line up and mine are kind of a little bit off. Let's just try and, I feel like it's an optical illusion to me, but I can't quite tell. All right, so now you're gonna slit and you're gonna just slit to your stitch line. I wish I would have practiced this, I'm not gonna lie. So get your cutting going there. I'm not shy about cutting though. <laughs> I just go for it. I am pincushion rich. Hi Lexi, how's it going? <laughs> Welcome. Thanks for giving us this project to sew. Everyone's pretty excited about it. I am definitely pincushion rich, Prook. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna look at this. Okay, so it does say to stitch with a 3 8 inch seam allowance and my quarter inch, like I thought I was sewing, is a little generous, so I'm gonna call it good. I'm used to welts having quarter inch seam allowance. <clears throat> It says it over and over, so that was my bad. Carefully get the front piece along the marking. Try to stop as close to the seam as possible. Okay. 
Um, so I'm going to add the Y now. Let's see. So I'm going to cut to this. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it up to the camera in just a second. So just shy of the end of my, can you see my, there's the end of the welt right there, right? So I cut it, I cut straight up to the end of my stitching, but then I'm gonna cut a Y right here. So I always call this a Y. So it's a little easier to see from this side. You're gonna cut an angle line to the edge of your stitching right here. It's always a Y because you need to be able to turn your work to the inside of the garment, okay? We'll do the side now. Make sure I'm not cutting anything. I'm just gonna cut the jacket. You don't need to cut the other pieces. They're all gonna turn inside. Like that. You don't have to go all the way in like that. I just wasn't thinking when I did that, so. And it says to cut the line that's on the pattern, but the line that's on my traced copy doesn't look like this. It's more of just like a, this is where you stop, so. All right, and so now we're gonna pull the, the pocket into the inside of the garment. All right. Like this, right? So now, see this is what I was talking about, Dorothy, like if you didn't sew this very good, look at how much all this is gonna get covered with your, with your welt, right? Let's pull this to the inside here, like this. So the welt is pretty thick, so it's gonna fight you a little bit. But you don't want it to poke to the inside. So see these little triangles are really important right there. All right, so um, where is my, there's my top. This is the top of my jacket. So this is the inside of my jacket right now, right? So let's see, it says to stitch your triangle to one of the pocket linings. This is where we're at right now. I'm gonna press it, and then you're gonna stitch your, roll up the edges of the pocket to reel the small triangles of fabric on each of the welts. Stitch these triangles to the deep pocket lining. Pretty sure the deep pocket lining is the longer one. So it's gonna be this top one. Pretty sure, mine's just marked wrong. So maybe you roll it like this. Let's see, you should stitch it to, so this is so weird. I wish they called it top and under pocket. <laughs> well, Eliza, I've never sewn this one, and so I'm kind of walking it through really slowly. And um, I'm pretty sure my, my pocket pieces are just mislabeled, because I'm going by the notches instead. I think this the top one's the deep pocket, and this one's the pocket lining. Um, and I'm just trying to make, I'm like literally figuring this out as I go. So that's why it looks complicated and I'm going slowly. So here we go. And I'll explain when I get there. So you're going to end up putting this pocket to this one right here like that, right? But you want all of this lining to the inside and I don't see that happening right here. Oh, that one is, why isn't this one? Oh, it is, okay. Yeah, so this triangle gets stitched to the top pocket. See how it ma makes sense that this is the top pocket? Yeah. So um, I'm gonna stitch it now and then I'm gonna press everything. So let's see, we're gonna move this out of the way and you see this little triangle right here? We're going to give it a nice little tug like this. I'm gonna look at all these layers. Let 
Let's see, I'm gonna try that right there. You're trying to now connect. I keep trying to pick this up, but it's fused on there. Um, you're trying to connect those two ends of your long stitches together now. I'm gonna look at it before I go further on the outside. All right. That's the one I just did, so that looks pretty good. I feel like I could have gotten this edge, this right here, underneath a little better. I wanted to top stitch it so bad, but I didn't. Because it wouldn't look like origami if you did. All right, now let's do the other one because that worked out. <clears throat> so, this is the way, logically, that you want to look at it. This is your pocket right side up. Your pocket's hanging down. And you're pulling all these pocket layers down on the jacket, right? As if they're going to lay forever and ever. Amen, right? I've just pulled my welt up like that. Now you're going to pull all of this to the inside like this. Like that. See that little edge right here? This was a little finicky just now, and I just folded under the edge like that, and I pulled it down this way. See how that one is? And then you line up your pockets, and then this is the triangle that I am stitching down here, right there, right? Did you hear that? All right, so we're going to pull our triangle. all this inside pull the triangle like this it's probably better you don't stitch through there like I had so I wasn't thinking and they want you to pull all this out of the way and stitch it onto there but I don't know I found that kind of funny I'm just looking at it again. <laughs> yeah. It does look complicated, doesn't it? I, I know I'm fussing with this right now, and it's because I'm trying to think of a really easy way to explain how to hold this. I'm just kind of trying to see what it wants to do right now. Um, and it just wants to be finicky right now. That's what it wants. And you can feel like the welt, you guys can't tell, but this welt feels really thick. I don't really like all that right there. So do you just turn that under and top stitch it down? I think you do. Okay. So then you're stitching. I'm trying to figure out a nice, easy way to do this. You know what I mean? There's gotta be a nice, like this one, This how do I do this one? This one was pretty easy, right? I went like this. Yeah, okay, that's how we do it. Like that. Oh, I know what that noise is. I'm caught on a bobbin thread from my drawer and a little bobbin's rolling around. Hi, Matt, how's it going? Okay, here we go, like this. So um, what I did was, this is what I was looking for. All right, so lay your coat right side up. And then if you're working on this end, you know, you want your coat right side up to you, you're going to peel back all of this right here and kind of get this little triangle exposed and you're going to top stitch it down to this pocket piece here, which is the one that is, um, it's the top pocket as if it's the one closest to your body if you're wearing it. Yeah, there you go, Terry. Yeah, I just figured that out. Thank you. Yes. She knows. She's an expert. The welt is so thick. That's partly what's fighting me right now. 
All right, so I'm gonna get it going right here. I'm just connecting those two ends of stitches, you know, that we just put in. Because I slit my triangle, I just don't want it to get any spread out, you know? So I'm stitching my triangle. Oh, but this one I got my, is that, is that, that looks better on that side. You watch the videos by a hundred times. So you know all the tricks. Okay. So now I'm lining up my pockets like traditionally, if you sewed all this perfectly, you're gonna line up your pocket edges and you could just sew it. But right here, it feels funny to me. I feel like I should have stuck that welt in here. Cause look at this one, this one went, this one went in there. So I'm gonna take this apart. I'm just gonna try that. So you don't really wanna have to seam rip any of your welt, but I've been gentle. It's going to be okay. You can always put it back. The instructions are, they seem clear, but they're not detailed. You know what I mean? Like that. Right? Yeah, so it'll be like this. I feel like this is kind of a problem that if you're not going to top stitch this edge here, you know, this is pretty thick. So I just want to know, is that going to cause problems later? Like, do I have to fold that back? I'm being fussy, I know, I know, but I just want to see. Like, I like the way this looks over here a lot. And then all, all you do next is top stitch this down. So, thanks for subscribing, Melissa. <laughs> Welcome. I'm just fussing, fussing, fussing over this because I've never sewn this jacket before and I want to make sure I do it right. So don't you think I could I want to like do that, but it didn't do, it did that there, but it didn't do it on this side. You know what I mean, Terry? You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's supposed to do that. You can kind of see the snail lining in there. It's kind of cute, you know? <laughs> Last place you want a snail is in your pocket, eh? It's hard to tell, I know. Maybe I could have made my slit a little longer, but you know, it says just leave three eighths open there. Or like don't don't go all the way to the edge, right? It didn't. This one actually fit in there, and maybe this one isn't sewn correctly, but it worked out okay. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I think I just lucked out on that one. <laughs> you know. So if I leave this, what if I leave this on the outside like this? Then I have to sew it. So if I pull this edge out right here, like this. So in this seam allowance right here is pushed down. That means this has to fold up right here. So this seam allowance is pushed down and this right here is pushed up. 
So that's why I feel like it does need to go in there. But there's not room for that. You know? I did what they said. You leave that up. I'm sure it's on top, okay? Leaving 3 8 inch free on each side of the pocket lining. A line pin the deep pocket. I mean, the welts are 3 8 of an seam allowance. That's 3 8 And then you turn it. That's the pocket lining, right? I'm about to just commit, you know, but still, I want to make sure. That's pocket lining, pocket lining. And see, look, they just, pin tops just the welts the rest of the reproof. You think so, Terry? But if I cut my box bigger, wouldn't I have to sew this little edge right here? Yeah, right? Yeah, I think you're right. A little scary to do that. But I feel like, I feel like um, what needs to happen is when you sew this well, you need to sew, um, when you do the seam right here, you need to sew to the end of the welt, and then that's your box, right? Because if you want the welt to sit inside of the pocket opening and extend up, it has to be, the slit has to cover the entire well. I have to figure these things out verbally, sorry guys, right? So if you're doing it, I'm just trying to think of it logically also. Like I could just do this and then I could make it work and all that, but I feel like when I sit here and I work it out and I make it really logical, then it's easier in the future to remember how to do it and um, know when I'm on the right track, right? I've sewn lots of welts, but nothing with like this nice detail and this thick. So I think I kind of want to do that. I kind of want to make this a little longer here. So I would do I would do it like this. So push it all to the right side like this. Push it all the right side. This one's done. It's this one I'm worried about right now. This is a leftover stitch. There we go. From when I just did it. Okay. Yeah, right, Terry? So don't I want it to go to the edge of that? My pocket is barely going to cover that. All right, so now we know for our next one, it'll be a breeze. And you'll see. So if you're, if you're sewing this with me, fast forward to the next one. Because I'm hoping I, I just do it seamlessly. <laughs> if you fast forward to the next one and I was still shite at it, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, this, po I didn't really, I feel like I got my pocket lined up here. Maybe I didn't cut it very good. So yeah, I want to do that. So I'm cutting it really close with my pocket lining right here though. It's going to be hard to get it in there. I hope I can. Can I, Terry? Look at that. What do you think? You think so? Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it from this side. Okay. 
barely enough, right? But you know how it is to get sometimes along the seam allowances of some of these things, especially if there's a zipper, you know? Like I've done zipper welts and I'm like, oh, holy heck, I cannot get even close to the edge. <laughs> All right, so I put my coat right sides, this one down here. Pull all this to the inside. It is unraveling before our eyes. Put the welt that way, but on the inside. Okay. Yeah, I think I can do it. <laughs> I'm just looking at it right now. So there we go. So there is my triangle. Try not to distort it. I'm just connecting those two corners now yeah I could get closer this is this is yeah okay I was a little too conservative with it oh I see what happened okay 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 I caught the lining in there by one stitch, you see that? All right. All right, so it's gonna sit like that. And I'm going to get this a little closer. I was kind of conservative with my corners. I was a little nervous. And we will Can I stitch the, um, right? Yeah, I can stitch that like that. So in the instructions it says, roll the pocket out of the way. And I don't really know what they mean by that. Like, cause they don't really say under pocket or top pocket. So I have a little lining showing there. That's what I'm trying to get rid of now. But see, this is what I was talking about to Dorothy. Like you can, if you have this little bit showing there, you can use this welt to kind of stitch that shut right there. I did really good at this end. This end, I'm having a little bit more trouble. I'm gonna release a few stitches right here and give myself options for later on. Because if it's a little less confined, I can kind of manipulate it into the shape I'm looking for. I'm just gonna get rid of a few. Like that. See, that kind of relaxed that little spot right there. Oh my God, that's not a thread, it's a snail antler. <laughs> what are those called, antenna? <laughs> Someday we're gonna have shirts that say, that's not a thread, it's a snail antler. All right, let's stitch the pocket together. So look, I was right about the pocket though. See how now my pocket just naturally lines up here at the bottom right here? That's so, I, I'm glad I did my pockets correctly. All right, so I'm gonna move this out of the way. You're not gonna see all of this on the inside of the jacket. So in the factory, they would sew that little corner and go all the way around the pocket. It would just be like all one thing because they'd be confident. Yeah, there was a fabric in our chicken boots line. I can't remember what it was now. It'll come to me actually. And um, I was constantly trying to pick the print off. Um, 
Because I thought it was thread. And it wasn't. So I think if I made this coat the second time, a second time, I would um, probably, you know, maybe I would French seam this pocket somehow. But that's kind of tricky. Doesn't need to be. I can't think of what that fabric was. It might have been like a butterfly horn, whatever those are called, you know. Um, I definitely had one fabric that the it was it was supposed to look um, like not like parchment, but like it had been like tea stained. And I had so many customers say, mine has a stain on it. And I would be like, that's the fabric print. We do a lot of French seams around here, Dorothy. I really like them. They just look nicer. All right, so there's my well. And so you can see my little bit of white there. So let's, um, let's hide that up and we'll pretend like we know what we're doing. But look at that, that's my pocket in there, All right? So we'll pull this here. I should have pressed this a while ago. I don't know, Terry. I think I, I went a little too far right there. I misjudged where my um, welt ended right there. So I, I can do better on my next one. You know? I don't want this pucker, and I'm getting a pucker. I'm going to use my awl. Let's see, hopefully we can kind of press that on. I don't know. I'm actually not going to back stitch. I'm going to look at it first. Yeah, maybe I should iron it first, huh? I'm glad I didn't back stitch there. Sometimes you just shouldn't back stitch. Let's iron this. And then I'll top stitch it down and then we're going to sew our other one and we're going to look like geniuses. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, I should have pressed it a while ago, but I got too caught up in like, how can we do this so that it's just like, now you sew this seam to this seam, you know? Yeah, totally, Carol. Part of it's that this welt is pretty thick. It's a nice detail though, but it's not, it's not, it's not like, you know, unnecessary. It's, it's good, you know? All right, let's press it. Let's press the heck out of it. Turn it on, there you go. Yeah, see, see how narrow this is right here? This little spot right here, this is what's giving me a little bit of trouble, trouble on this end because it's under here. You see that? All right, so we'll give the pocket a little bit of a tug. Lay it nice and flat. Like that. Try and get it as natural as possible. I think all in all it looks pretty good. I just like right here have this end. It's a little past this edge here. So that's a cautionary tale. Like remember when I was telling you try and get all these edges nice and stacked up? Do as I say, not as I do. I didn't realize mine wasn't all stacked up right there. See if I can add some water to this too. And so I used mine with the interfacing.
<laughs> Thanks, Eliza. I know, when I saw that, I was like, well, I have to use that little iron. It looks like my pattern weights when I saw that. I use Canva for all the like thumbnails, graphics, and everything you see. And um, when I put in iron, that's it. that little guy was there and he's so cute. You can see I live in a really uh, calcium rich water area. You're going to see calcium on my jacket. It doesn't hurt anything, but it is a constant thing I deal with. There's so many minerals in the water around here. Very volcanic, too. I don't know, Terry. What do you think of that? I'm going to do this. I'm going to pull everything up, and I'm going to go like this and try and get rid of that seam that I just pressed in there. Yeah, I think Terry referenced a lot of videos when she did her um, men's coat. So I feel like the best thing would be, if you really wanted to, is I would pop this seam open right here and I would tuck this little nugget under there better. Cause look at this, I could get this better, you know? Like there's a whole, it's pretty hard for me to fix that right now. You know what I mean? But I could just top stitch this down right here and call it good. Because you just never know what kind of evil you might get <laughs> when you start ripping apart your weld seams. You know what I mean, jelly beans? I don't feel like I did a quite an awesome job, but um, I think the next one's going to be a lot better. So right now, I'm just going to pin these down, but I'm kind of focusing on, on this one down here. Like when I pinned it, I'm kind of just letting this sit here naturally, right? I'm not pulling anything. And if I focus on stitching it from like right about here, up. I think I can cover all this up right here. Now, for for anyone that's doing this and they're like really beating themselves up for some reason or another of their well pocket, I'm here to tell you <laughs> when it's done and you're wearing it and you put your hands in your pockets over and over and over again and you're not scrutinizing it anymore. It's gonna be fine, okay? The reason I'm agonizing over this is because I'm kind of like, okay, this is a sponsored stream. This is gonna hang in a store, right? So I want the people that see it to go, oh yeah, this person might know what they're doing. I'll watch that video, <laughs> right? So I have that, I have that self-preservation at the back of my head. I also have what I, I'm hoping, like I'm always trying to look for streamlining ways, that's how what I'm personally very interested in is streamlining, making things logical and like straightforward steps. So it's not as scary. And also like you're just kind of setting yourself up for success for other things and projects, like other sewing steps. So I'm constantly thinking like that. That's the pattern drafter in me and the person who used to design spec sheets for factories to follow. So you're always trying to look for something that is Rather than looking at it as a welt pocket, you're like, oh, I sew this seam, and I sew this seam, and I sew this seam, and it's done, right? You know what I mean? So. You're looking at it most likely like, okay, 
I really want to wear this coat this winter. <laughs> you know? And I'm sewing this coat. And look at that. With top stitching it, it kind of covers it all up. <laughs> so I'm just stitching on this um, well edge. I'm going to kind of try and tuck under those that little bit trying to sneak out and I'm going to do a better job on the other one. I will say the pattern says to do this an eighth of an inch in and that's a great idea. Um, the reason I didn't was because if I would have done an eighth of an inch in, you would have been able to pull up the edge and see the white. So, so not, not too bad. So here you go. Okay. Not bad. That's what the back looks like. Uh, you can see my my uh, pocket bag sticks out here on this side and not on this side. And, and look, it got folded under there. And I didn't notice it when I did my top stitching. So that's what that is. I always like to see like, well, what's mine supposed to look like? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> All right, so let's do the other one. This is where you hear like the narrator for SpongeBob saying, you know, three hours later, right? <laughs> okay, so let's see here. Ah, remember the front when it just had a nice little yellow slit on it? <laughs> Clean start. Here we go. We're gonna try and do the logical version. All right, so you have your welt. Interfacing side can look in your seam allowance to make sure it goes um, face down on the project. But I, right now I'm gonna actually look, do I have these edges lined up pretty good? You know, like I definitely, this is the right side. I don't want like this one sneaking out. This one's not so bad if it's sneaking out. It's not, it's lined up, right? So you're gonna put that face down right here. And then on your pockets, the shorter one. So one is shorter than the other, supposedly. The shorter one goes on the um, welt right here. See, I got my selvage there. I didn't even notice that until today. Line up that edge there. Center it. So, you know, my pocket is barely pa sticking out past the well, which I actually, it would be nice if this stuck out a little bit more, give us a little bit more to grab onto, you know? All right, so then, and then this one will go like this once we're ready to sew, all right? So this time, <clears throat> we're gonna sew this, including the whole welt that we just made um, so, in other words, I'm going to sew a straight seam, the entire length of this welt at three eighths of an inch seam allowance, um, or maybe like a fat quarter plus, which is kind of what I did on the other one, so that they're symmetrical or, or you know, the same. Um, we're going to include include only up to the end of the welt, and then we'll stop hopefully three eighths of an inch shy of the pocket bag edges. Okay. Okay. It's kind of pushing my presser foot a little bit. I'm having trouble with the steam out. Here's the edge of my welt. Do I do one more stitch? No. <laughs> okay, 
So there we go. Look at it. It's not a very straight line because I my presser foot was getting a little pushed around there. All right, so now we're going to put on our top pocket, which is the longer one. The longer one because it has to go further to meet to the end of the pocket. And I'm doing this right sides towards the coat. All right, so now I'm just going to line it up with this stitch edge on here on the side. No, 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 no. Oh, I don't want that stitch. Oh, maybe I do. It's a little uneven. Don't you, you guys see that? There we go. Okay. So now we're going to cut. I'm going to do it from this side. So make sure you don't have your pocket bags under this slit right here. You don't want to cut those. All right, so then you're gonna stop, um, you know, I don't know, half inch away, something like that, wherever you want. Just kind of, now you're gonna cut to your corners, um, where, which is, corner is the end of the stitching here, like this. You want to go right up to it. Get the cleanest edge when you do. Okay. Um, so now you're going to poke all this into the jacket like this. And now we're gonna look at it and see. And so, yeah, this one's already lining up a little better. So then we'll have our well like that, okay? Let's pull this lining to the inside. I'm trying not to pull it too much because it's shredding a little bit. All right, so then, um, So like Terry said, you're going to lift up the right side of your coat like this. So I'm going to adjust all this like that. So this is my outside of my coat. And then I'm going to, I'm going to stitch my corner triangles now, right? So I'm just peeling back the coat like this and looking for the triangle, which is right here. See that? And then um, this, um, uh, uh, this is the top pocket, so or it's the pocket closest to the coat body right here. This one is kind of hanging away. And then you're going to stitch the triangle to this one, the, the pocket that's going to sit against you. And you're going to want to stitch between the, these two rows of stitches we just put in. Now, for logic's sake, where you're stitching is this right here. So now, some people don't stitch this triangle, you know, but um, it's, a, it's a good idea too because it reinforces your pocket opening. So look at how nice it is before you stitch it. It just, it just is nice right now. And this is when it kind of gets naughty though. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and pull my welt a little bit away so I don't catch it by accident. And I'm kind of pulling on this right here. If you are trying to make sure you get this your first time, I feel like pulling this a little more. So it's almost like rolling a little bit like this. Um, it makes it a little more successful. So now I'm just connecting these two corners. I'm giving the triangle a bottom base. And you're not stitching through your welt. You're only stitching through the triangle and the pocket lining. 
see how we did. <laughs> great. Okay, so this method's working really great. All right, so here's our bottom one. Same thing, you're gonna poke all this into the inside of the coat, right? Flip it back like this on itself. Here's your triangle. Here's your bottom pocket. I'm gonna kind of pull the top a little so it's biased. And that's just so that when you're stitching this, you're getting as close to the pocket square as possible. Pocket square, pocket opening, you know what I mean? Because if you are shy, I think it's really good to know what happens if you don't do what someone's telling you to do, right? Because you're like, oh, I'm a little nervous, right? So say I was kind of nervous about putting my needle, you know, right here at this, this like cut juncture. So first of all, you really want to sew, finish off this rectangle because you don't want any raw edges poking to the outside of your garment. Also, this right here is giving you the opportunity to cover up this white that might poke, like peek out this opening right here. So if you were to be shy about the triangle, you might end up with this kind of look. But if you're kind of, you know, this is the one that I'm, this is the layer right here that I'm peeling this way. So if I'm pulling it that way towards the pocket a little bit more, you're going to get a triangle that is going to cover up all the white that might show through. White meaning my pocket lining. All right, so let's finish off this side. Okay. Perfect, okay? So now um, we can press it and we can stitch our pocket lining. And just make sure that you stitch your pocket lining so that the pocket lining points down. Don't go up towards your armhole, do that. Oh, wait, did I just do that? Did I just do my wrong one? No, I didn't. <laughs> it's like, how would I have done that? <laughs> okay, so, um, Got all of our pocket layers here. You know, look at them. Now, if you're doing trials of this and you're trying to get the hang of it, um, label your pieces so you don't get kind of lost in the, the mashup of all your pocket. That pocket's not lining up as well this time down here. But did you see my piece? It looked a little, like maybe one was cut a little different. Like I noticed it when I was like trying to compare the different lengths. So, all right, so I'm just gonna sew this. Um, why aren't you sewing? There you go. I'm gonna follow the pocket lining that's a little shorter. See right there? Because if you if you line if you just force those two to line up, you might get kind of a funny hanging jacket. So you're not really you're probably not at risk at that because you're not tethering the pocket bag to anything. All right, and then now you um, yeah, I should have pressed, and now you can top stitch your pocket bag or your pocket well. Okay, so make sure you don't let your pocket bag sneak up there, okay? Okay, I don't even need to pin it. Look at how great that is. This one went way better, look at that. It just wants to do what I'm telling it to do now. So that was the, the trick. Snails, <laughs> so cute. Thanks for making me better sewist, you guys. I really appreciate it. <laughs> you guys make me better for sure. Um, I think a nice touch for this jacket would be to hand stitch. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. To hand stitch this to the coat. I think it would look better, to be honest. 
I kind of want to do that. I kind of want to just not stitch that and not stitch, unstitch the other one and hand sew this to the jacket. What do you guys think? See how that, that kind of gives it kind of a hard edge, but what if I just hand stitched that, this end down here? Really, Terry? You were already making that coat, I thought. <laughs> hand sew, yeah, right, Alicia? I think so too. Yeah, so let's take it out and we'll hand sew it when we're done. Or when we're having a, you know, rough moment and we need a break. I can take this out later, honestly, but that'll be a nice. You like the top stitching, Dory? Dorothy? <laughs> I personally love top stitching just in general. I love top stitching the heck out of things. It's like therapy for me. <laughs> I just love it. The Tamarack is a, you hand stitch those and um, every time I've made that jacket, I think I've made it, I've only made it twice, but I think I've done the pockets a few times. Um, every time I do it, I'm like, oh, this is not looking like it's going to all come together. And then you hand stitch it and it's like, oh, look at me, <laughs> you know? So I'm going to get this point a little better. All right. So we have our pocket. Okay, cool. You guys want to sew something else now? <laughs> We've only been doing these pockets for an hour and 41 minutes. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? Whew. But that second pocket was like quick, right? So hopefully you did fast forward to this pocket and you were like, yeah, she knows what she's doing. <laughs> All right, so now we have um, the jacket to the back. the back. So let's see here. Let's get past these pages. Yeah, so you're going to sew your back seam. Oh yeah, so you're going to sew your center back seam, your um, coat to your back. Um, and then it says on this step here, 3-3, three, three, to apply something called an interfacing tape and I don't have that and I don't know what that is so what I'm gonna do is what is that Terry so um, yeah you didn't you didn't miss the first pocket Lisa where I kind of deconstructed it in my head and went over it ad nauseum so <laughs> yeah so smart Carol yeah so smart to mark the time down you might oh you might be able to bookmark it you actually, I can't remember. Is it, isn't it, is it um, Twitch, uh, YouTube videos where you can bookmark it? Where'd I see that? Is it like hem tape? Stay tape? Okay. Oh, we had sewing group. Nice. I don't know. Where did I, how have I seen it? Does anyone know how to bookmark? I don't know. Maybe that's like a pro member thing. I'm not a pro member, so. All right, so, um... I think I'm just going to reinforce that stitching and then clip the curve. And then we do the sleeve. All right, we got this. And then I'll probably, let's see, we'll, we'll get through part of this and then I'll probably call it. I mean, honestly, I could probably call it right now um, and then we could continue. But I, all I did was the welts. <laughs> okay, so here is our backs. Right sides together. You don't need to finish your edges because it's fully lined. And the seam allowances are 3 eighths of an inch. Can you believe the seam allowance is only 3 eighths? That's crazy to me. Crazy. Oh. Oh, interesting. You can do it on crafting and book. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Mata. Maybe I could just do that. Just cut a long piece like that. Um, I long, 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 long time ago, you know, bought curtains from Ikea and they come with like this narrow double-sided, um, fusible 
web and so people don't have to sew their hems they can just fold it up and put that behind it and i saved it all i was like oh this stuff's kind of fun i've never used it but i used it once recently for something oh to patch something and i and it was this tiny little thing i had to, a, a hole that's right remember remember my uh, jean jacket that i made um and then I was cutting the buttonhole. My jean jacket turned out fantastic. Like it turned out so great. And I was make put the buttons and buttonholes in. And I was as I was cutting the buttonhole, I was so worried I was gonna go through the end of the buttonhole because the denim was so stiff that I not I didn't. What I did was I went through the corner of my collar of all things. Like the my seam ripper was so sharp. It went right through the middle of the collar. There was like a clean slice hole. And I was like, I just set it aside and walked, literally walked away. I was like, okay. <laughs> and um, I just set the whole thing aside for like a couple of weeks. <laughs> I don't remember how long, but I was like, oh, wow, man, now. And so I um, then I bought a buttonhole cutter. That's how I got my buttonhole cutter, you guys. Because I could not get my steam ripper or scissors into that small hole to cut through the, the buttonhole on the yoke seam. Yeah. Right, Carol? Yeah, so what I did was I opened up my collar really gently. I barely handled it. And I stuck that double-sided web in there um, and then pushed and then just ironed the heck out of it. You can't even see it. Like the slice was so clean, but it's certainly a weak point and someday it'll start fraying along that that little edge, you know? So, and then I can just embroider something there. But yeah, the buttonhole cutter, it cut that thing like butter. It was awesome. I was so glad I got it. But yeah, at that point I was just, and I, I was using, I put tack buttons on for the buttonholes. It all turned out fine, but I can barely even button that button. This is the one I would always button, you know? So that was a bummer. But still, you know, <laughs> I was just realizing the other day, like, don't I have another jacket? I was like, oh, yeah, the jean jacket. So, all right, I'm going to do my side seams now. Just doing them right sides together. I'll probably hand sew this pocket, um, those pocket things before the next stream. I like it when, um, this is how I was as a knitter too. I liked to weave my ends in. I liked to finish things as I go so that when I'm done done, it's done done. <laughs> and I don't have like, you know, you have that moment where you're like, oh, I'm done. Oh, I still need to put the buttons and buttonholes on. And I need to hand sew that one little thing. I imagine if you're really uh, nervous about doing the welt pockets and you just really don't feel up for it, um, you can put side seam pockets on instead or patch pockets on this jacket. So if you're really wanting like the look, this jacket, like it's cute. It's, you know, swing style jacket with a belt closure. Um, you could put on different pockets, so. All right, we'll do our other side seam. Yeah, I bet there are really good detailed videos on welts. I should charge more. <laughs> but you probably don't wanna pay and watch me figure it out either. <laughs> So in case some of you guys weren't here yesterday, I launched the pattern for the pie slice and the cupcake pin cushion, but check your email first because if you have supported me in any way and anyone who does through the end of this week, I sent you a code to redeem it for free. So um, I want you to make sure you look for that because it costs you zero dollars <laughs> that way. And it's just a little code you put in at checkout. Um, so if you've given me a Twitch Prime subscription, a Streamlabs donation, like a one and done. Um, someone donated a super chat in YouTube yesterday. I'm going to send her the pattern. 
Um, and if you're a Patreon subscriber, you get the pattern for free and I emailed you a code. So just check the email that's affiliated with those accounts that you, um, and if you didn't get it, let me know because it was really hard to compile all the emails and names from those three areas. I had to like double check it against some some interesting ways like looking at PayPal, looking at um, um, the Streamlabs thing. And Twitch doesn't reveal to me your email address. They just let me bulk email you. And they also don't um, uh, reveal your name. So I actually, I know some of you got it twice and it's it's because I can't tell that who you are between your Twitch name and your YouTube name. Oh, okay, Lisa, sorry about that. Um, I did, uh, if you continue to have trouble, let me know, but just so you know, Lisa, that there is a video, a link to the video in there, so you don't have to download the video. It should be a zip, a zip file, though. It didn't take too long when I did it. It's not something you probably want to download over public Wi-Fi, though, because it might take a little bit, so... I should maybe, maybe, maybe I could make two forms of that so that you can get the PDF with the, a link to the video and then a PDF with the actual video, you know, and the links, you know, so that way you don't have to wait for the download. I'm learning you guys, I'm learning on you how to do this. So sorry, you guys are the guinea pigs. All right, so, so far this is our, how our coat's coming together. No shoulder seams yet. Oof, it's kind of hard to, uh... <laughs> but look, it's kind—it's pretty long. Like right now, this is this is a really big armhole. Right now, and it's gonna go like this. It's like right above my knee. So that's cool. Okay, so um, I'm gonna stop there. I think the this could be a three part coat, but um, we're gonna, we can do a lot on Saturday. You know, and um, we'll have the collar and the facing and the lining left and the belt. So, oh, and it tries to give you it opens the PDF. So, did you already did you unzip the PV, PDF the file, Lisa? You're welcome, Mata. The closure for the coat is either belted or snapped. Oh, it took about forty-five seconds. Yeah. Okay, yeah, try again, Lisa, let me know. Um, yeah, it does, because you, the, I couldn't figure out how to, in my in the past, I only sent a link to a video. But because I want this to be really seamless and you don't have to wait on me to email you something, because I want people to buy this at any time of the day, and I don't want to forget to send someone a video link, the, um, it sends you the video. <laughs> so, um, what I recommend is putting it in cloud storage so it's not on your computer. Like if you use OneDrive or um, Dropbox or iCloud or something like that, keep it there. That way you don't have to like store it. Um, and, and then I provided a file where you can just, you don't have to watch the movie on your computer, which might make you download it then. You can just click the link and it'll take you to Vimeo. And then you watch it there. So I'm working on it, you guys. I'm sorry I'm learning on you, but um, I've never sold PDF downloads and I've never sold them a a accompanying a video, you know? And not a lot of people do, so I don't really have anyone to ask. People will provide videos, but they, it's not like I know them I'm not, and they might be competitive, so I don't want to disrespect them and ask them how they do it. I never really appreciated when people would ask me, competitors would ask me certain things like that. 
there's ways to go about it. You know, like you got to do your research. So I'm doing my research. So anything I can do to make it easier, you guys, let me know. All right. So I feel like I know I struggled on that first pocket, but I feel like the second one went really, really, really good. Here's my first one. I'm going to start taking out the seams and then I'm going to hand stitch it down. I think it's going to look even better. Plus you have a little bit more variable with hand sewing. Ah, thanks Louise. Yeah, thank you hearts for this great project. I know they're really excited about seeing it sewn up. So um, I'm really glad we're taking our time with the pockets. I, I like these involved projects. I really do, you know. Thanks, Terry. That means a lot coming from you. <laughs> and I see you might making of uh, the Mountain View pull-ons. I'm wearing mine. Yes, it is the Cheyenne Tunic Manta by Hey June Handmade. There's a video. I made a video on it. I, I'm going to make more of this tunic. I love it. It is ideal to me. I love uh, Johnny collars, you know, like the ones that have the plaque at the stop here. Um, I think I'm going to adjust the back so it doesn't get hung. It pools on my back like everything I make does. So I might adjust the pattern next time, but I'm definitely making it again. I love it. And then I'm making, I wore it over my Mountain View pull-ons because every pair of jeans I put on today, the little like fly uh, wings out right there. Makes me look like I have an Audi belly button. So I wanted it to be smooth on my belly. <laughs> so I put the Mountain Views on. I'm like, I've been wearing these a lot lately. Wait, where is I? Taking out the stitching. Wait, where is that spot? Oh, well, maybe I got it. There it is, okay. All right, guys, um, I'll see you Saturday. We'll keep sewing this opium coat by Deer and Doe Patterns and sponsored by Hearts Fabric. And remember, if you buy any of this stuff, uh, you can get it at Hearts um, for 10% off using code SOSO10. So thanks for that too, Hearts. Um, thanks again for donations and everything, all the support, you guys. I really appreciate it. And um, we'll see you on Saturday. Bye, Nicolene. <laughs> And thanks again for coming. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome, you guys. My pleasure. So I'll see you guys soon. Bye.